you're a fembot! No sh- In the end, we'll all be fembots, won't we? What's up guys, it's Poir, and finally it is done, the advanced build, which may have the smoothest start to finish playthrough out of any build ever. This build covers all the elemental weaknesses, crushing each specific enemy type with ease. The downside is you need three weapons and it's quite expensive to upgrade them all, but the upside is you have a lot of variety. Also, most throwable items scale with advance, and this build will be the most powerful throwable build as well. Now, if you're wondering about the Berserk Armor, yes, it is a PC mod. But before we begin, be a good puppet and give me your like button. And let's begin. To start your journey off, you want to begin with the Motivity Strength class as your starting class. The starting greatsword handle is extremely safe to use to counter red attacks or a flurry of attacks as well, so you can use that greatsword for quite a while. But your first upgrade will be the electric coil that you can buy from the merchant at the Elysian Boulevard House Waypoint. This weapon straight up kills most of the early game bots in like 2-3 to three hits, and for bigger enemies, focus on using charge attacks. And if you don't know, the shock status makes enemies take higher damage. However, you don't want to use the default handle, you still want to use the great sword handle as the perfect block is so good that it carries you very far. And most of the moveset is slash attacks so you don't lose damage from the stab attacks. Just try not to use the stab attacks too much. Making even those minor robots a cakewalk since you do good damage and you can simply save your fable juice for those perfect blocks to block the red attacks and then simply strafe around, charge attack, block, repeat. Charge attacks are king, especially now with the lower stagger thresholds against elites from the patch 1.2 update. Around chapter 4 though, you start meeting fleshy enemies. So while you can use the salamander dagger found at the start of chapter 3, I suggest using the greatsword or the booster glaive blade instead found in that stage as well, and just putting the fire grinder onto them to beat the monster type enemies. And you'll piggyback between these weapons and coil for most of your playthrough. Coil against the robots and the swords against the monsters. The next weapon that's actually part of the final build is the Acidic Spear found in Chapter 5 at the Path of Pilgrim here. This will be the third weapon mixed into your rotation, dealing decay thrust damage at a fairly high rate. I've tested all the Acidic weapons and I mean the other ones unlock pretty much at the end of the game anyways, so this is just the best one either way, Acid being effective mostly against humans which also kind of destroys Laxasia, one of the only hard bosses that wasn't nerfed from the patch. But yeah, the best in slot for this is its own handle. So yeah, no changes. Just make sure to put an advanced crank on it to increase the scaling. In chapter five, however, the second part of this build, you want to go to the Malum District, where you can meet the merchant there to buy throwable items infinitely. Throwing items rule the game currently, where you can pretty much take 50% or more of a boss's HP from throwing items alone, if not 100% if you just stack all of them. So I would suggest stop leveling and simply buy shot puts and the elemental fire, shock, and acid items to use against the bosses. Even in New Game Plus, throwable items deal around 1k damage each, where bosses have like maybe 20k HP, so pretty good still. Make sure to get around 7 for each of the ones I mentioned, that should be fine enough to beat a last phase of the boss more easily, and you'll be coming back here often, so if you do need Ergo to stock up, watch my XP farming video to always be topped up by doing the best XP farms. The next weapon is the electric saw. Once you get this, you pretty much drop the coil, so don't upgrade the coil past plus 6. But this is bought in Chapter 7 in Lorenzini Arcade, from the merchant near the fountain after you progress the stage and unlock various shortcuts and stuff. However, the handle is kinda slow, so we're swapping that baby out in place of the exploding pickaxe handle, which is found in Chapter 5 in a chest after going to the left staircase at the Estelle entrance point. While the electric saw handle has better scaling, dealing more damage on normal attacks, the exploding handle just has the superior moveset, it's faster, which is important since at 3 hits in a short time, the saw blade's true damage is unlocked as you'll gain electricity and it starts spinning faster, which you can do easily with the normal R2s that come out way quicker in succession. But also, surprisingly, its charge attack does more damage than the circular saw handle, even though that has higher scaling, likely because charge attacks probably scale physical damage more than elemental. And with this weapon, you're pretty much only going to be using charge strong attacks or the R2s over your normal R1s, alongside running attacks and your puppet string, which you want to fully upgrade to the max. So any elite, you will lead with puppet string, do the air combo that's going to pancake or stagger the enemy, and then you go for your charge R2, usually breaking the enemy's stance, get your critical in, and then you follow up with either another charge attack or a Fable Blade attack, and that usually kills pretty much everything, if not definitely over 70%. So yeah, best electric weapon bar none. Yolner and Pickaxe are bad advanced weapons since 
They're just normal weapons with an elemental buff art, basically. They're not really true advanced weapons. The Crystal Axe is good, and its Fable can do decent damage over time, but its range is just too short, and its Fable costs 3 bars, which is expensive, considering the rest of the weapon is kind of meh. Also, it's the very last weapon in the game, 5 minutes before the last boss, so yeah, most won't even be able to use it till New Game Plus. But the last main weapon, our main fire weapon, is the Black Steel Cutter. Found in a hermit cave near a monster elite, which you can unlock the cave around chapter 9 by buying a cryptic vessel, and then the gates to the cave will open up. This thing is amazing. However, I make it even better by putting the acidic greatsword handle on it. This handle isn't found until the last chapter, so use a normal handle for now, but it's straight up better than the default because its handle is the same parry one as the greatsword of fate, your starting greatsword meaning easy perfect guards, which with the pure organ upgrades you'll have by now, you'll be breaking enemy's weapons easily or triggering the stagger status much quicker. I pretty much one tapped Manus with this setup easily, which I struggle with a ton on my dex build even though I use two dragons for some reason, but yeah, this thing claps pretty much every other boss or elite enemy that's weak to fire. And I even use this against humans because of the parry thing over the spear, so it's probably my favorite among the three that you'll be using, but you're gonna use the electric saw, the acidic spear and this and you want to put the advanced cranks on pretty much all the weapons but if you're super high level you might want to go motivity instead because again charge strong attacks seem to have a higher physical multiplier than elemental and the advanced stat only scales the elemental portion not physical so even though you might get better scaling with advance you're not scaling physical damage at all with advance but those are the trio weapons to use for arms. Obviously, I mentioned Puppet String, but you can also use the Age of Shield until that's patched. But for your special grinder, you want the Stagger Grinder to more easily stagger enemies with the Puppet String and your strong attacks, or go for the Perfection Grinder for even more perfect guarding. So this with the Acidic Handle and the Age of Shield, you pretty much make the game easy mode, perfect blocking everything with no skill involved. For stats, here is my level 80 ish spread. 25 vit is the bare minimum I would say to get, 15 vigor, 26 capacity allows me to be at medium roll speed under 60% weight low, which I prefer, meaning our rolls and stamina regen are fast, which is important. Then motivity you can keep at the base, don't touch technique, and lastly advance you want at 34 or higher, but past 40 you, you get diminishing returns. So from there, I would start pumping Vigor more for more extra stamina, more Vit for more life to around 30, and then after that, once you're super high level, you can probably start investing into Motivity just for some extra Fizz damage. For amulets, here they are. Weight amulet plus one is the most important, followed by the Fable Ring that boosts damage depending on your Fable slots, giving you up to 20% damage boost at five slots. Then you want either Victor's Ring for more Fizz damage on successful hits, or you can go with a Stamina Regen Ring or more Stamina Ring. But your final ring should be the damage versus enemy type rings. When you use a saw against puppets, you want the puppet killer ring, human ring for the spear, and then the carcass one when you use the fire blade. And those are going to be your rings. And I also equip the heaviest parts for max defense. Again, increase your capacity as you see fit to equip the heaviest ones as you progress. And lastly, the P-Organ stuff. I'll hover over each slowly, but you want the pulse cell first followed by the Fable slots, followed by the Ground Dodge, which I hope they remove from this and make permanent into the game. But yeah, after that, get the Hamlet slot. Third phase, only get Recovery Pulse Cell for now, so you can unlock fourth phase to get the Stagger node on Perfect Guard, and you want your Amulet slot, Fable slot, and the rest is up to you. Since we are a throwing item build, just want to make sure to get the Possession Carry Limit for throwables, passives, so you can have up to seven throwables each to decimate any boss or elite easily. Also get all the Stagger, Perfect Guard, and Fable Charge effects from the attack nodes. And yeah, that is pretty much the best advanced build in the game. It's got the perfect weight, it's got useful handles and attack speeds, it covers all the elements, and it uses all the cheap things in the game to win. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoy the build. Dex is done, Advance is done, that only leaves one more. So if you want to see that soon, make sure to give the video a like, gives me inspiration, and comment down below which advanced weapon is your favorite, and why advanced cranks should give better scaling than just D for non-advanced handles. Seriously, if there's one gripe I have is that you're pretty much limited to only using handles that scale with advanced already. Otherwise, if you're using like a normal blade handle, you lose out on a lot of normal attack damage. So I do wish advanced scaling got to like at least C for non-advanced weapons. You can have more variety when you use a crank. But if you want to see more Eliza P or other Souls like content in the future, <laughs> uh, make sure to subscribe for more Souls like epicness.